What's up friends, I'm Tyler and I figure that today we should probably go over the best of 2019. You know, uh, what do you think? Yeah, 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 okay, deal. Hey friends, I'm Tyler, welcome back to my channel and I have a new lens on my camera so things are a little bit wider. I still don't have my new lights so things are a little bit off. The light that I usually use as my key light is just not quite working as well like with this lens. But yeah, it's just gonna be a little bit of a give or take and I can't really tell if I'm in or out of focus and it's also screwing getting the raccoon eyes and yeah, it's just a mess, but I don't have the time. I gotta get this fucking video done. It's gotta be out tomorrow. I gotta power on. Yeah, I figured just go over some of the best of 2019. I'm really hoping that this is in focus because it really looks like slightly out of focus. <sighs> the pains of doing everything yourself. Now, before I get into my favorites of 2019, I feel like since in the last video, I did the most overrated, I think I have to do the most underrated. For me, this is very, very easy because I ended up really enjoying some movies this year that got shit on quite a bit. So let's, let's talk about them. Now, the first two that I'm gonna talk about are kind of paired together because they're both live action remakes of cartoons. I think just from me saying that, you probably know what I'm saying, but Aladdin, oh wait, wrong, wrong side. Aladdin, <laughs> I really enjoyed this movie. This is honestly the only Guy Ritchie movie that I've enjoyed and I've watched all of them and yeah. So that was unexpected. I didn't expect to like Will Smith. I didn't expect to like anything in this movie, but I enjoyed it all. My main issue with like the Jungle Book and Beauty and the Beast was that they added all this unnecessary stuff. So I'm not one of those people complaining that it's a shot for shot remake. I like that these things are very, very, very similar to the cartoon. Which brings me to The Lion King. <laughs> now, I saw a lot of people complaining about how the, this movie is essentially just a shot for shot remake. And yeah, it is. It is. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. It's a shot for shot remake. Like, you are correct. But it's great. Like, it's really, really good. Shockingly, the worst part of the movie is Beyonce. She's just, she's not playing Nala. She's playing Beyonce. So that's never gonna be good. And yeah, otherwise, I thought the movie was great. They could have done a better job with uh, Scar's song, but otherwise, I mean, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it all. In fact, I love Timon and Pumbaa in the remake, so again, no, no issues whatsoever. <laughs> Now, this next one is one that I am honestly shocked that I enjoyed as much as I did because every trailer I hated, the buzz came out that it was awful, and yeah, it's on a lot of worst of lists this year, which I very much don't agree with. That would be Hellboy. I really, 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 really liked this movie, and I, I mean, if you don't, you don't. It's very comic booky, but it's dark. I think it's gonna be one of those movies that kind of gains cult status as the years go on and that people are able to remove themselves more from the Perlman films because I had an issue at first of like, yeah, that's not Hellboy. But as it kept going along, I'm like, oh, this is like a comic book come to life. This is amazing. I loved it, and that's really all with the most underrated. Let's get into my actual list. Now, I figure I should go in reverse order on this because that just makes the most sense so starting at number 10 we've got spider-man far from home now i'm a huge spider-man fan absolutely love spider-man the twists and turns in this movie just they were so satisfying i loved it i love 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 loved it i've been a huge fan of spider-man since i was a kid the fact that we finally were able to see mysterio do his thing like oh can you really ask for much more the mysterio illusion sequence is amazing it's mind-blowingly good and when the moment happened in theaters it was just like this is what i've been waiting for my entire childhood <laughs> Like, I wanted to see this exact scene. But also Tom Holland is just the ultimate Spider-Man and I can't wait to see where they take this series and I'm so, so glad that it's staying in the MCU. <laughs> Next up is a Netflix movie that kind of came and went called The King. Now this is a much slower movie than I usually enjoy, but something about the cinematography, the sound design, the acting obviously with such a phenomenal cast. You have Timothy Chalamet and Joel Edgerton, Ben Mendelsohn. The cast is just so, so good. And yeah, I'm not usually into these kinds of movies, but this time I really, really was, and I cannot recommend it enough. I don't really know much about the story to begin with, and I know that people that do are the ones that have more of an issue with this, but I just enjoyed it for the movie that it was, and really, really, really loved it. Next up, I actually talked about this movie on my channel, and that would be It Chapter 2. I made a whole long video about this, 
going over all the reasons I love it. And so feel free to check that out because that'll be the most information that I could possibly give you on my opinions on it rather than just rabble, rabble, rabble here. And yeah, that's enough rabble. <laughs> Next up is one that I was expecting to enjoy, but I was not expecting to enjoy it this much. Toy Story 4. Oh my God, this might be my favorite in the whole series. And I love the Toy Story series. I love the journey that it's on. I laughed, I cried, I just love I love Pixar. Pixar just does such a good job with their films, and yeah. Next up is the culmination of the entire MCU with Avengers Endgame. I don't understand. I was kind of worried about the Infinity War Endgame saga, mainly because I didn't have complete faith in the Russo brothers. I liked the Captain America films that they directed, but they also felt very like small scale, even Civil War, and so I just didn't think that they had this like grand epic cosmic adventure in them but they knocked it out of the park. We're able to give each character its own little little slice of the pie. And while I didn't quite love it as much as Infinity War, that's just because I'm a big fan of bad guys and Thanos is pretty much the main character in Infinity War. So, I mean, <laughs> that obviously sways things, but Endgame was seriously just awesome. Next up is one that I knew would be in my top 10 the moment it was announced. Jordan Peele's Us. Now this is actually a movie that I've been meaning to make a video on, but I just haven't because I just haven't. That's just how it's been. But the first video of the year, I'll address that as well as some other things. I'm gonna do a little bit of a channel update then and just, yeah, talk to you guys about some stuff that's gonna be going on in 2020 and how the channel will be changing a bit. But yeah, I just love Us. It's so, so good. And I keep just saying that it's so hard to like, when you're doing these like best of lists to not just say the same words over and over, but it's really great with tension. Lupita Nyong'o's performance is just next level good. <sighs> just make sure you see this movie. It's not as obviously as culturally relevant as Get Out, but it's just an incredible piece of filmmaking. And Jordan Peele is the greatest horror director working today. Him, Ari Aster, and Mike Flanagan. <laughs> That's the top of the heap. Next up, any year that Quentin Tarantino releases a film, you can pretty much assume it's gonna be in my top five because he's just that good and his aesthetic really aligns with my own personal taste and <laughs> There's not a there's not a bad Tarantino film, and I will fight you about it. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is definitely towards the top of the heap in terms of his films. The first time you watch it, you're wondering like, oh, why is this scene relevant? Why are we along for this little part? And why is it skipping ahead at this spot? Any subsequent viewing, pretty much understand very quickly what Quentin is going for, and it just, it's fantastic. The last 15 minutes, probably some of the greatest 15 minutes in all of cinema. I mean, it sounds hyperbolic, but it's true. Ask damn near anyone that's seen it and they will tell you that ending is something else. Next up is something coming from one of my favorite comedy directors and it's from Taika Waititi. We're talking Jojo Rabbit. This is gonna be, I think that this is gonna absolutely take over award season and if it doesn't then they're just a bunch of dummies. Scarlett Johansson in particular, that best supporting actress nom, it's hers. If they don't give it to her then fuck you Academy. <laughs> then again I I don't watch the Oscars anymore. Who cares about award shows? But it would still be nice if the correct films were to get these awards. And I view Jojo Rabbit as the tippy top hand. My next two, like I completely understand someone not liking them because they're more in line with my personal tastes and not everyone's gonna enjoy a horror film and a, and a foreign film. So Jojo Rabbit, probably the overall best film of the year. Now for me, in terms of my favorite, let's talk about those. Next up at number two is actually a film that I'm not super into foreign films usually, but Parasite is just something else. It is absolutely mind-blowing in its execution. The acting, I've all, I'm always amazed that when you can see a great performance when you don't understand the language, but here there's just so many great performances. It's amazing. I keep telling everyone about this film, but no one seems to care because it's a foreign film and so they just brush it off, which sucks, but I mean, I can't blame them because that's half the time how I am as well, so it's unfortunate, but take it from me right now. You guys need to see it because it's amazing. Now, finally, number one is one that I've talked about in my 31 Days of Halloween. I even stated there it's my favorite film of the year, and that has not changed despite the very, very strong competition. Now, I love horror films. That's what this channel primarily consists of, is me talking about horror films, and 
Midsummer just, it's a mind blowing experience. I think it's the greatest breakup movie of all time. And it's also a film that I don't really want to talk about a whole lot because I'm really worried about spoiling it. And I don't want to do that because I think that the fresher you go into the film, then the better it is. And yeah, that's really all. I hope that you guys enjoyed my little best of 2019 list. And I hope you also enjoyed a video every Friday in 2019 because it won't be happening in 2020. Again, we'll talk about it in the, that in the next video, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Let me know down below what your top 10 of the year or underrated films of the year are. Might be something that I hadn't heard of or slipped past me, and so it means I'll have to go check it out. That's really all. I will see you guys in 2020. Hey friends, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and check out this video that YouTube thinks that you would like.